I think the movie we really have to talk about mm-hmm. here that is doing so poorly. Okay. Is a movie that rebranded itself midstream, which is always horrible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about the number four movie, Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. Okay. Yeah. Whitney Houston obviously added on the front of this because I Want to Dance with Somebody was not an iconic enough name to explain to people who this movie was about. Yeah. And you didn't see this with Bohemian Rhapsody. It didn't become Freddie Mercury, Bohemian Rhapsody, or Mm -hmm. Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Right, right. The fact that this movie is at $14.5 million in its second weekend over a holiday week. Like, this was a movie that if it was going to rebound, it would rebound now. Yes. Right. Babylon yes. was never going to rebound. But right. This would be a movie that, you know, we always talk about the greatest showman and that's a unicorn. That is yep. a unicorn. And we have to realize that that's a unicorn. Mm-hmm. But there could have been people who were like, I'm waiting to see this movie because I have other things to do. This would have been the prime time to see this film. Mm-hmm. And it dropped 16 percent. Yeah. With everything else that has been succeeding went up. Yes, yes. Even the menu down at eight went up 62%. A movie that's been out for two months now. Yeah, and now is available on HBO Max, so that is going to end effectively its run. But I will give you a little bit of time to crow about the success of this movie, $36.1 million for a movie at this scale and with this sort of uh theme mm-hmm. it did very well yeah i it's mean success the menu is about it's so, it's so close it's gonna happen in the next week it seems is going to end up making more and obviously this next movie is a spectacular all-time bomb but the menu is going to make more than disney's strange world you know and that is was almost unfathomable Two yeah. months ago, and it's happening. You well, know, they are within a couple of hundred thousand of each other next weekend, even being on HBO Max. The menu is going to pass Disney's Strange World, its big animated Thanksgiving release. This is huge for the menu. And Strange World, uh, I said it was going to be a catastrophe. Strange World is, even if you uh, add in inflation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm is the biggest box office bomb in Disney animation history. Wow. Wow. Even adjusted for inflation. Wow. That is that you got to let that sink in. That is stunning. Disney has been around since the twenties. You know, we're talking about a, a company that started releasing movies back when steamboats were the preferred mode of transportation Mm -hmm. and strange world is the biggest bomb in the history of their animation studio now we don't normally talk about adjusted for inflation because listen we live in the u.s nothing ever is adjusted for inflation nothing right no No business ever adjusts anything for inflation so why should we start right but it's just such a huge deal it's such a huge deal it's 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 stunning. It's stunning how badly Strange World is bombed. But the menu, a small thriller um, from Fox Searchlight is about to surpass that. This is an incredible haul for the menu. And, you know, we're not, again, we're not an awards podcast. There are other podcasts that handle that. But I do think the menu is the type of movie where it's box office run has been so solid and so surprising that, and it's been such an audience pleaser. And I do think, again, we're not the Streamo boys, but I think it's going to play like gangbusters now that it's on HBO. I think another huge audience is going to find this movie and talk about online. I think the menu is a movie that's done so well, it could generate some awards buzz because of that. And I'm talking like screenplay, Maybe, maybe, maybe a Ray finds best actor. Nom, nom, nom. Possibly. I do think that is how, how well the menu is performed with audiences and at the box office that it could actually get a screenplay Oscar nomination out of its box office. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a sort of movie just talking money wise. Yeah. 
that it's what we always say. This was a theatrical movie that did well, that is now going to drive people to HBO Max. Yes. Instead of just dropping it on HBO Max or dropping it on Hulu and letting it disappear, this movie is going to make more money for the people who made it because it went the right direction. Yes. It went from theaters to streaming. Now, yes. I did see it's on PVOD to buy for 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. So here's your option. You can either subscribe to HBO Max for a month or just own this movie. Right. right? So you right. do have the option not to subscribe to HBO Max and still be able to buy this movie for the cost of a cheap ticket in New York City. Right, right. right? But either so way, it's gonna, generating it's revenue. Money. Yep. And people are going to go on iTunes, and if they don't do the streaming thing, they go on iTunes, they see this movie, they see, oh, I saw that on the marquee, or I saw that in the newspaper, or whatever. 14 bu 15 bucks. ah, it's a night at home. We can spend 14 bucks, 15 bucks. They'll buy it, right? But they knew right. it was in the theater. If it's a random movie that just got dropped on iTunes, they're not going to buy it. Right, right, right. So the menu continues to be successful. But back to Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. I mean, it, it's a total failure. And listen, RIP. Okay? Of course, of but course. In and, and, and listen, email us if you disagree with this. But I hate to say it. But Mariah Carey has usurped mm -hmm. Whitney Houston's place in our culture, okay? Because she's the diva that survived. She's the diva that has the Christmas specials. And yes. Whitney Houston is the person who died in a really tragic way, and she's a bummer to think about, right? I know she glowed brighter than any star ever did in the 80s. Listen, we all loved Whitney Houston in the 80s. Yes gorgeous talented fierce she Hit was maker. a movie star for yep. christ's sake the bodyguard yep. waiting to exhale yep yep you know yep. the preacher's wife to a smaller extent but th she was just a glowing star and now it's been dimmed and diminished that this movie about this once upon a time icon has made so little yeah i mean i think it's also a situation where they you know, and usually these movies, you do try and cast a up and comer in the role, but they they didn't have a movie star or particularly even like very well known up and coming actress in the lead. So there was no draw there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't think the movie was particularly well reviewed. No. And these type of movies, I mean, even though Bohemian Rhapsody wasn't that well reviewed. It was just a playlist of songs that people wanted to listen to for three hours. And Rami Malek ended up winning the Oscar for it. So there was something there, mm -hmm. you know, that was a big draw to people. And something like Rocket Man was pretty well reviewed. And Elton John doesn't have the tragic ending that Whitney Houston has. Um, well, yeah, just, it's, just to talk. I mean, Elvis about has a tragic ending, though, but. I but, think you know that... we're so far out from it. Yeah, and there's been so many jokes made about him yeah. and and his death that it no longer impacts people the way that I think a pretty recent yeah death yeah the way she died I think is 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 really really a bummer and I haven't yes. seen the film so I don't know how they tackle it but it's like do you want to see that on Christmas right right it, there is something to Elvis's death. That even though he died tragically, he died tragically, like you said, a long time ago. And there's a huge contingent of people who also just don't believe he did die. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas with Whitney Houston, we all accept that she did die. And yes. with Elvis, you could go see that movie and you could say, eh, it doesn't matter what they show me at the end. I know Elvis is still alive. Exactly. And you can't yeah. do that with Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody. And so... We're just to look at like a, a comparison here. Sure. Respect, which was mm -hmm. a movie that came out in 2021 in a very different time, obviously. Mm -hmm. That was like a COVID ish time. It still made $24.2 million at the box office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Aretha Franklin, icon, huge classic artist behind many classic songs. Mm -hmm. And I think the key ingredient here is Jennifer Hudson, 
is yep. a name. She's yep. a person who people know. She won an Oscar. She's been in big movies. And that is what put that that movie wasn't a success. No. But twenty four million ain't ten million or whatever this movie's at. It's at fifteen, but I will I or will 15. say I do think that if the Jennifer Hudson starring uh respect, if the Aretha Franklin movie came out now instead of the Whitney Houston movie, I do think it would have done a lot better. Yes. You know, because uh, respect came out what August of twenty twenty one. So it was still very much like feeling out of the pandemic box office times. Yeah, August 13th. Yeah, I think if that movie came out instead of the Whitney Houston movie now, it would have been doing a lot better. Because like you said, Jennifer Hudson is a star. She's an Oscar winner. She's a very famous person. She's a famous person, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in and, 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 and that part, <laughs> yes. fuck it, it's a raw feed. In that part, she's a star, right? Yes. As a singer, yes. she's a star. She won as a singer for Dreamgirls. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I think if you switch those movies out, the Aretha Franklin movie would be doing better right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think that at this point, I want to dance with somebody is totally DOA. It made one point. Uh, it would it make last weekend? It made, um, three point nine million in its last holiday weekend, it's going to yeah. fall off the face of the earth this coming weekend. I think yeah. it's totally done. Yeah. Cause I mean, I think the audience who would go see that, uh, has had their chance and said, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what, like you said at the top, when you brought up this movie, changing the title last minute and adding the character's name to the front, just does not work. I mean, what we does saw that, that remind you of, I mean, Harley Quinn birds of prey. Yep. Um, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. It, you got to call it. If that's what you wanted to call it, you had to call it that months in advance. This movie needed to be called Whitney Houston, the movie birds yep. of prey needed to be called Harley Quinn, the movie, but three months in advance, not right before the, the as the film is being delivered to the theater. Retitling a movie mm -hmm. in the middle of its run is like having a commercial where you get actors to pretend they saw the movie and say how much they like it. Uh -huh. When those commercials come out in the middle of a movie's run or in the second weekend of a movie's run, you know yes. that there's trouble. Yes, yes. Listen, it is a I warning sign. A of, I haven't watched a lot of TV. Maybe there is a Whitney Houston, I Just Want to Dance with Somebody commercial where they where they have actors saying that they just saw that movie that's very w well a possibility right right on stations that i don't watch right right you know because i don't watch terrestrial tv a lot no no you don't um your 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 rabbit ears antennas they've totally gone to hell they're totally <laughs> busted